यमुना थीरा वन चाहरी जय हराधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी जय हराधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन बल्ला गिरी बरधारी गोपी जन बल्ला गिरी बरधारी यशोद नंदना ब्रज जन रंजन यशोद नंदना ब्रज जन रंजन या मुन थीरा वन चाहरी यमन थीरा वन चाहरी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे कृष्ण कृष्ण हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा 
Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Daivim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudhirayat Nista Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistiki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, chapter number 54, text number 49. Tasmad Agyana Jam Shokam Atma Shosha Vimohanam Tatvagyanena Niritva Swastabhava Smite, suchi smite, tasmad dagyana jam shokam, atma shosha vimohanam, tadvagyane na niritva, swastabhava suchi smite. Tasmad Dagyana Jam Shokam Atma Shosha Vimohanam Tadvagyani Naniritva Swastabhava Suchi Smite
Vaishnavis. Tasmat, Tasmat, therefore, therefore Agyana, Agyana, out of ignorance, of ignorance jam, jam, born, born shokam, shokam, the lamentation, the lamentation atma, atma, yourself, yourself shosha, shosha, drying up, drying up vimohanam, vimohanam, and bewildering. And Tadva of the truth, Gyanena with knowledge, Niritya dispelling, Swasta reinstated in your natural mood, Bhava, please be, Suchismite. O oh, you whose smile is pure. Translation. Therefore, with transcendental knowledge, dispel the grief that is weakening and confounding your mind. Please resume your natural mood, O oh princess of the pristine smile. You can repeat. Therefore, Therefore with, transcendental knowledge, with transcendental knowledge, dispel the grief, dispel the grief that, is weakening, that is weakening and confounding your mind. Please re resume your natural mood. O oh, princess of the pristine smile, purport. Lord Balaram reminds Srimati Rukmini that she is the eternal goddess of fortune, performing pastimes with the Lord in this world. And she should thus give up her so-called grief. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tesmai Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapada Kamalam Shri Karun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Raganathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishaka Nitamscha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patita Nam Pavanepyo Vaishnavipyo Namo Nama Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale 
Shrimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Goravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Sunyavadi Paschacha Desatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So this chapter is entitled The Marriage of Krishna and Rukmini Lord Krishna had come and kidnapped, you could say, Rukmini, just before she was to be married to Sishupala. And then Rukmini's brother, Rukmi, was greatly angered by this, and he had a lot of hate for Lord Krishna. So he set out to try to bring back Rukmini, and even he wanted to kill Krishna. And he vowed that if he couldn't bring back Rukmini, he would not return to his kingdom. So Rukmi went off with his army. But at that time, Lord Balaram came along with the Yadu army. And the Yadu army, they crushed Rukmi's army, defeated him. However, Rukmi came and tried to challenge Lord Krishna. And it ended up with Lord Krishna tying up Rukmi, and he was about to kill him. But just before he uh, put the fatal blow on Rukmi, Rukmini appealed to Lord Krishna that, Oh, my Lord, you are the master of everything. You are the supreme. Please be kind to my brother. Please don't kill him. Although Rukmi was not uh, trying to do anything good for Rukmini, still Rukmini had compassion on him. And uh, in the purport, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur is quoted, uh, uh, quoting a worldly principle that the sister is the emblem of mercy for the brother. So certainly Rukmini was very merciful to her brother. And Lord Krishna took the words of Rukmini to heart. And so he didn't kill Rukmi, but he did humiliate him. He cut of parts of his hair and beard and it was most humiliating for Rukmi for a Kshatriya to have their head their hair cut off their beard cut it is very humiliating it is worse than death you could say so Rukmi was treated in this way by Lord Krishna and it was at that time Lord Balaram appeared on the scene. Lord Balaram had brought the Yadu army and they crushed the army of Rukmi and the other kings who had come opposing Krishna. And Lord Balaram came and saw the situation. And then Lord Balaram began to speak. First of all, he chastised Krishna mildly. He said to Lord Krishna that, how could you treat your relative like this? This man is your relative because Lord Krishna had taken Rukmini, of course, he's accepting her as his wife. And so Lord Balaram is saying, this is your brother-in-law. He's your relative. You should not treat him like this. This is not proper. And Lord Balaram then went on to speak philosophically to Rukmini. He wants to pacify her mind. 
because Rukmini was also feeling aggrieved. Although she was happy in one way, in one sense, because she had been saved from the marriage with Sishupal, which she had, of course, had been uh, an instrument in arranging because she had written her letter and sent a brahmana to Dwarka to inform Lord Krishna and she told Lord Krishna everything, what is the proper time to come and kidnap her. So Rukmini very much wanted to marry Lord Krishna. She didn't want to marry Sishupala. But still, when she saw her brother Rukmi in this condition, she was aggrieved. She was disturbed that, oh, this is not very good. Look at my poor brother. He is really humiliated and disgraced. So Lord Balaram is speaking to Rukmini and he is telling her the importance of transcendental knowledge that one can overcome all of the difficulties and the miseries in life by the power of transcendental knowledge and of course this is discussed in Bhagavad Gita also in different places uh, Lord Krishna describes how the material world he compares it to, in some place, he compares it to a, a, a blazing fire. The material world is like a forest fire, right? And we have to extinguish that blazing fire of material existence. Every morning we sing the first verse from the Guru Vastikam Samsara Dava Nala Lida Loka that by the, the spiritual master is compared to the rain cloud who is extinguishing the blazing fire of material existence. So the spiritual master is like the rain cloud that he's carrying the water from the sea and pouring the water on the land. In other words, it's not the spiritual master's mercy, but it's Krishna's mercy. And the spiritual master is delivering the mercy of Krishna. Sometimes Srila Prabhupada compared the duty of the spiritual master to be like a postman. Of course, it was a very special occasion. Srila Prabhupada was in New Vrindavan and it was 1972, I think. Anyway, there was a lot of publicity about spiritual teachers and Hare Krishna movement was catching the eye of the world particularly in the USA. And a lot of reporters came there to New Vrindavan because it was going to be Janmastami and then Srila Prabhupada's Vyasa Puja is observed the next day. So many press reporters came there, they gathered there, they wanted to see this event. This was, some, this was news at that time in the USA. It had been like the year of the guru. Time magazine declared the year of the guru. There were many different gurus and Prabhupada was one of them. He was of course unique compared to these other spiritual people, so-called spiritual teachers. Uh, and Many reporters had come there to New Vrindavan to see what was going on and to see how we worshipped Prabhupada. So Srila Prabhupada explained to them how the spiritual master is just like a postman. He's delivering the mail. The postman does not open the mail and interfere with it. 
He doesn't add anything. He doesn't take anything out. He just delivers the mail. In the same way Prabhupada explained, the spiritual teacher is delivering the knowledge of Krishna. He is delivering this, this message of Krishna, transcendental knowledge. And this knowledge is so powerful, it can extinguish the fire of material life. So the material world is compared to a blazing fire. And you need, when there's a big fire in the forest, then it's not enough to just send a few fire engines because the forest is so big and it's so many trees are burning. Sometimes in Indonesia, in Indonesia they have some very big forests and if the forest catches fire then it's very difficult. The the, the smoke, the fumes will come all the way into Malaysia. It comes from one country to another country, crosses the ocean, comes to Malaysia and all the air in Malaysia becomes polluted with the fire in Indonesia. So the only way you can extinguish the forest fire is when there's a rain cloud. So the example of the spiritual teacher being like the rain cloud is very significant. There's no other means to extinguish the blazing fire. We need the mercy of the spiritual teacher in order to be saved from material life. That connection with the spiritual teacher is essential. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna describes that we get transcendental knowledge by approaching a spiritual teacher. Of course, it's a famous verse in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4, text 34. Lord Krishna is saying, just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual teacher. The self-realized soul has seen the truth and he can impart knowledge unto us. So in this verse, the qualification of the teacher and the student is described. It is not just a case of the teacher will do everything, but the student also has to be willing to perform his duty. So the, the qualification of the teacher is described that uh, his tattvadarshi, not only has he seen the truth, but he can also reveal it to others. The teacher has to have that qualification. Sometimes people will say, oh, I know the truth, but I just can't put it in words. So what is the good, you know? They, they say they know the truth, but they cannot explain anything to us. So the, the spiritual teacher not only knows the truth, but he's able to present it to people in a manner in which they can understand. And the student, he has to also do his part. Pranipatena. He has to fall down without reservation. He has to submit himself humbly. We cannot approach with pride. We have to approach with humility. Therefore, it is required that the student has to offer obeisances to the spiritual teacher. And then Pariprashnena. He has to put inquiries. He has to ask suitable questions. In Prabhupada's purport to this verse, Prabhupada talks about how you cannot put challenging questions to the spiritual teacher. And they should not be ridiculous questions. They should be in relation to Krishna consciousness. 
There are many examples of challenging questions, you know. People will say, can God make a stone so heavy that even he cannot lift it? So, of course, we answer that question by telling them, yes, you are that stone. <laughs> because you're so dumb, you ask such a stupid question that even though God comes, He cannot pick you up. Like, like that, we try, to, we try to defeat these nonsense kind of questions. So, Pariprashnena is important. It's the business of the student to put suitable questions before the teacher. And we see, Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna puts questions to Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam, You've got Maharaj Parikshit putting questions to Sukadeva Goswami and, and Sonaka Rishi is questioning Sutta Goswami and Vidura is questioning Uddhava and Maitreya. So our whole scriptures are based on, on this business, Pari Prashnina, putting questions and then Sevaya. There must also be service, that service is important of giving service to the spiritual teacher. Mahatsevam dwara mahur vimuktes. By serving the great souls, it opens the doors to liberation. So, it's not enough to just simply ask questions and get the knowledge, but we are also required to do service. And service to the spiritual master comes in many forms. It may be with our body, it may be with our mind, it may be with our words. But there must be that service. So in this way, Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna is describing, you want spiritual knowledge, you have to approach a spiritual teacher. And you may say, well, I'm not qualified. But Lord Krishna tells us that even if you're the most sinful person, you can come and you can become situated on this boat of transcendental knowledge. Apichat asipapi bio sarve bio papakritamaha. That even if you are the most sinful of sinners, if you're on the boat of transcendental knowledge, then you can cross over the ocean of material existence. So Lord Krishna is giving another example about the material existence. It is not just only the blazing fire, but it can be also the ocean. And of course to swim across the ocean, if you're in the ocean, then it's a very difficult thing. And generally they will tell people, you know, if you're in the plane and the plane crashes in the ocean, don't try to swim. <laughs> because you'll never swim across the ocean. You, the ocean is so vast. You need someone to come and pick you up out of that ocean. And hopefully the boat will come and you can, they can pick us up out of that ocean. So that transcendental knowledge is like a boat which can take us across that ocean. Even if we are the most sinful of sinners, but still there is hope for us that we can cross over the ocean of material existence by transcendental knowledge. Lord Balaram is explaining to Rukmini the importance of this transcendental knowledge. You're having troubles, you're having difficulties, you have to think of the philosophy, you have to think of this knowledge and use it to defeat all the obstacles which you face. Oh, you have problems. The, the prob our real problem is we have forgotten Krishna. We have forgotten who we are and we have forgotten our eternal relationship with Lord Krishna. 
And when we fix our mind properly on this transcendental knowledge, then all of these problems will be removed. Lord Krishna describes in the Bhagavad Gita that transcendental knowledge is like a blazing fire and it burns all the wood to ashes. So all of the reactions which we are suffering from or which we may be involved in in the material world, they can all be removed by the power of transcendental knowledge. It's so important for us to get this knowledge. How do you get this knowledge? It's all here. It's in these books. Prabhupada said, I will live forever by my books. We have to read Prabhupada's books more and more. And of course, since Prabhupada has left us, we are, we are realizing more and more the importance of studying the scriptures. And it's our good fortune today that we do have wonderful courses for everyone to get transcendental knowledge, to go and study. It's great to distribute books. We feel a lot of pleasure when we go out on Sankirtan and if you can distribute books. Vijay Prabhu was telling me, I was asking him about my godbrother Brigupati, who was the number one book distributor in the world last year. So I asked him, how did he do it? He's 73 years old and he was the number one book distributor. So I asked Prabhu, how did he do so many books? Because usually he would be in the airports for years, he was in the airports. And I, I remember when he joined, I was in New York when he joined, when he became a devotee, we used to go out on the streets of New York and distribute there. How could he distribute so many books? He told me he would distribute stacks of books, not one book, he would take a bunch of books. And he'd sell the whole, and who does he sell them to? To students. He goes in the campus in the USA. Apparently it's the only place practically in the world where you don't need permission. You can go and distribute books. And he distributed so many, number one in the world. You know, it's amazing. And he did it to students. And I thought, students, they don't have money. No, no they, they do. They also have money, especially in America, right? <laughs> so he, he, he did it. He is giving books. So it's nice selling books, but that's only the first step. We've got to get people to read these books and to study them. Prabhupada wrote to our temple president in New York. There was this one temple president, Gopijana Balaba Prabhu, and Prabhupada told him, get the devotees to cram my purports. Cram. You know, if you, when you're a student, sometimes you have to cram for an exam. You stay up all night before or something to get ready for the exam. So Prabhupada said, cram my purport. We have to study Prabhupada's book so carefully, so closely, and that will give us transcendental knowledge. By that power of transcendental knowledge, we can overcome all the obstacles in the world. Krishna says, just like the blazing fire burns wood to ashes, so all the reactions of our past will all be removed by transcendental knowledge. So we're encouraging all the devotees, especially our devotees, that they should study Prabhupada's books carefully. Like here in Vrindavan, we have our Vrindavan Institute and they have wonderful courses 
for us to go and study books, the scripture, study and learn this knowledge and learn this knowledge and then go out and teach it. Don't just keep it for yourself. Once we get that knowledge, we have to distribute it. And then we will become so much more eager to distribute Prabhupada's books and to teach and to share our realizations with each other. This is the business of devotional service. There's Sambandha, after Sambandha comes Abhidaya. So Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, he describes Abhidaya, Machita Madgata Prana Bodhayantas Parasparam Katayantas Tamam Nityam Jushyanti Cha Ramanti The thoughts of my devotees dwell in me, their lives are surrendered unto me, and they derive great satisfaction and bliss, enlightening one another in conversing about me. So this is Abhidaya. This is the process of devotional service. You want to get Prayojana? You want the goal? You want Prima Bhakti? You have to first of all do the Abhidaya. You have to go through the process. You have to study, first of all, Sambandha. Sambandha is the beginning. Get the knowledge. Get the basic knowledge. Then practice the process of devotional service. And then you will come to Prema Bhakti, love of God. You don't get that Prema just by going to Radha Kund and sitting and holding your Japa beads. You've got to follow the process which is given to us by Lord Krishna. We want to get Krishna Prem. We can, but we have to hear about Krishna. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prem Sadya Kabunai Shravanadi Shuddha Chitti Korihi Udhai In Chaitanya Charitamrita Krishna Das Kaviraj describes that Krishna Prem is in everyone's heart. But it has to be awakened by hearing. We have to hear. And how much do we have to hear? We have to hear for a long time. And we should hear constantly. Therefore, we are having every day Bhagavatam class. We are having so many different classes. We are holding courses. Seminars are being conducted. It's all an opportunity for us to hear. And when the hearing, when our hearing becomes effective, then we will be eager to, to chant and to go out and distribute more books and to meet the people and talk to them about Krishna. Srila Prabhupada was asked, why are there so many young people in your movement in Prabhupada's time? We were all young. We were all teenagers and in, our, in our 20s, a few in their 30s, very few. So the reporters were asking Prabhupada like this. And Prabhupada said, because that is the time for education. When you're young, you get the young people, you educate them. So very important that we are trying to preach to the youth and not even the youth. We want to preach to the children because Prahlad Maharaj says, Komar Acharat Prabhno Dharmam Bhagavatam. Just like Srila Prabhupada, when he was a young boy, he was learning, he was hearing, he was playing Madanga, he was going to see the deities. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati also as a child, his father, seminal father Bhaktivinoda Thakur taught him the Bhagavad Gita and he'd memorized the entire Bhagavad Gita and he could explain it also. So young people, the youth, they're the future of our Krishna consciousness movement. 
We are building and opening temples for these people that in the future they will take it up. His Holiness Jaipataka Swami Maharaj, he said, I'm just waiting to see TOVP opened. Of course, once it's opened, then of course we want the people, the young people to come forward, take up Krishna consciousness. We want to see people, of course, of every age, take up Krishna consciousness. For example, in some countries we have people who are illiterate. They cannot read. And we are trying to teach them Krishna consciousness. I met some people, there were some, there, in Malaysia for example, there's some Tamil people. The Tamil people come to Malaysia and some of them are illiterate. They didn't have the opportunity to learn the language. They cannot read. So we have devotees teach them. They read to them. They read the books to them. And they explain whatever they cannot understand. In China, we have an old people's university. In China, they say, Lao Nian Da Xie. Lao Nian means old people. Da Xie means university. The old people's university. We want everyone to have the chance of becoming Krishna conscious. Not only just the young people. Every, Krishna consciousness is for everyone. Whatever stage of life you are in, it's never too late. And we see Ajamil, of course, when he was young, he had the opportunity. And then again, in his old age, at the end of his life, he took advantage to again become devotee. So there are many people like Ajamila, like Dhritarashtra also, Prabhupada said Dhritarashtras are in every home today. We have to think how to save them, how to give them Krishna consciousness. We need therefore people like Vidura to come and preach and save them, to give them the give them this transcendental knowledge before it's too late. Prabhupada had that mood in writing his books. He writes in the introduction of the Bhagavad Gita, if even one person will become a devotee, I will consider it a success. We should have that mood in preaching, in going out to give Krishna consciousness. Don't be concerned about the results. It's our endeavor which is important, that we make the effort to do it, to give Krishna to others. They may accept, they may not, but we have tried. That is important. And if we have not made the effort, then what was the good of us coming into Krishna consciousness? Srila Prabhupada expected all of us to take up this missionary spirit. And when we study Prabhupada's books, we are often identifying mood and mission. Mood and mission. It's mentioned in many places you'll pick up Prabhupada's mood and mission in the purports. For example, Dadichi. He was approached by Indra. Famous, right? And you, the story of Dadichi. Indra has to get the bones to, to kill Vritasura. And he comes to Dadichi to ask him for the bones from his body. And Dadichi wanted to hear, for the sake of hearing some transcendental knowledge. He said, oh, don't you know the body is the thing we're most attached to? And Indra said, well, yes, you know, it's difficult to give charity, 
But it's also difficult to ask for charity. Sometimes we get devotees, <laughs> they, they don't like to ask for charity. But Prabhupada expected we should do that. Just like when Shamsundar Prabhu was, uh, he made friendship with George Harrison, the famous musician, and so Prabhupada said, you should ask him to pay for the printing of the Krishna book. And Shamsundar said, oh Prabhupada, he doesn't like people coming to him for money all the time. But Prabhupada said, then what is the good of cultivating a relationship with him? He said, you have to ask him. <laughs> and, and so, and, and just as Shamsundar was asking, Shamsundar describes, suddenly there was a crash. George was going, oh, you know, he didn't like it. But then there was thunder and crashing, lightning. And then, okay, okay. George Harrison said, okay, I surrender. I'll, I'll pay for it. And he paid for the printing, the first printing of the Krishna book. So anyway, Dadichi was approached, give up, can you give me the bones from your body? And Prabhupada writes in the purport, he said, it's, it's our duty. We, we want to find people who are willing to give up the comfort of life for the sake of taking up this missionary work of pushing on the Krishna consciousness movement of giving Krishna consciousness, educating people about spiritual values and the proper culture of spiritual life. We have to teach. We have to give this knowledge to others. Just like Dadichi, he sacrificed his life. He gave up his life just to give his bones to Indra. We should give a life, give this life for Krishna. What is the good of just simply solving the economic problems? Oh, I am maintaining my family very nicely. What is the good? I have a nice home. I have my car. I am educated. It's all useless. It's all temporary. But if you do some service for Krishna, you dedicate this life for Krishna, it's the greatest credit. So, Srila Prabhupada preaches like that in his books. He encourages all of us that it's our duty to sacrifice this life in devotion to Krishna. We're not meant to just eat and sleep. So human life is special. Having achieved this rare human life, it's, it's not enough. It, it's rare to have the human birth, but, and it's even more rare to have association with devotees. And in the association of devotees, we can cross over the ocean of material existence. So, the preaching mood, like Lord Balaram, he's Adi Guru, right? He is the original Guru. He's preaching to Rukmini. He's telling Rukmini, yeah, don't be bewildered, don't feel so worried about it. Everyone is suffering and enjoying according to our past. They don't worry about whatever happened. What is important is to be situated in transcendental knowledge. And in this way, you can get free from this material bondage. The miseries of life will become insignificant if we're situated with transcendental knowledge. Hare Krishna. Are there any questions? Yes, Prabhu. In the Jamil story, while they were reading the Prabhupada, they said that Jamil said, Narayan, Narayan, Narayan. The Prabhupada said, Did I say three times? He said, Once is enough, Narayan. 
<laughs> so when we, you're saying that we need repeated hearing and repeated chanting, and um, after prolonged hearing and chanting, then we could make some progress. But if once is enough, why, why so many times chanting, chanting, chanting? Well, once is enough if there's quality. It depends on the quality. It's not once is enough for everyone. For Prabhupada, once is enough. Prabhupada is chanting the pure holy name. But for everyone, yeah, if you're chanting purely, once is enough. But there's quality in the chanting. In the same way there is quality in hearing. And often our hearing is not so attentive. We hear it, it goes in one ear and comes out the other. It, when we hear, it's meant to go to the heart. And the sign that we have properly heard is there will be a change. Not that we just stay the same. You have to change. Then we understand the hearing has been effective. So we give up all material desires. When the hearing is effective, then we become fixed in Krishna consciousness. So once hearing, if you are pure, if you chant the pure name, there must be that quality. <clears throat> nice, uh, <clears throat> Maharaj, you have given very nice class. Um, I, uh, my question is, not a question actually, I'm surprised that in that stage, Rukmini is Mahalakshmi, is the expansion of Krishna. Rukmini is what? Mahalakshmi. Mahalakshmi, uh -huh, yeah. So, in that stage, they're, they're doing Leela, in that stage, how she got this type of situation without, I mean, even she has to request Krishna not to kill Rukmi. What is the, why, why it is like that? I mean, in that stage, is a pure uh, uh, state, you know, pure stage. Why she has got uh, uh, um, disturbed in her mind? Why she got disturbed in her yeah, mind? Yeah, because, because, because Rukmi was, I mean, uh, disturbing, no? Mm. So that's why she, because it is a relationship between the two, brother and sister, uh, it's, it's quite natural that it will come that, please, don't kill him. But this, the, 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 the understanding of that, why Rukmini has, I mean, uh, mm, why, why she is bewildered? Why she is bewildered? Because she is in a very pure consciousness, you know. So Lord Balaram can come and speak transcendental knowledge to her. <laughs> that's, what, that's, what, that's what I'm telling. That's what, it, even Balaram has to come. They're <laughs> both in the same platform, no. Uh, of course, they're, so both, uh, both of them are in the plat same platform. Why, why Balaram has to come and... Uh, <laughs> well, we have to hear some, so we can have some subject matter for hearing and chanting. The Lord arranges all of these different pastimes. You know, if there's none of these lilas, none of these intrigues, then we won't have any Srimad Bhagavatam to read and chant. The Lord's, it's lila, the potent, the lila shakti arranging all of this. In the purport, of course, the commentators, they say that Bal Lord Balaram is reminding Rukmini of her eternal position. So, but we want to understand also the power of transcendental knowledge. Because we also may be in similar situation one day. You know, you may find yourself a relative is humiliated or put in some embarrassing situation or even killed. So how to view it, how to understand it? We have to understand everything in relation to transcendental knowledge. Must be some reason behind it. So Lord Krishna is teaching all of us through these different leelas. Hmm? 
Okay, yes, last question. Thank you, Maharaj Hare Krishna. Thank you for your class. I, you mentioned that we should carefully study Srila Prabhupada's books. So is there any recommendation from Srila Prabhupada in one way, in, uh, in what way we should do this study, like some process, how to do it, how to go through these books? Yes, yeah, Srila Prabhupada told us we should do like Bhakti Shastri, Bhakti Vaibhav, Bhakti Vedanta, Bhakti Sarvabhoma. And Prabhupada took that from Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. In the Gaudiya Math they have it. And when Prabhupada came and is, began ISKCON, he mentioned also we should have Bhakti Shastri. And in the very beginning of our movement, Prabhupada began giving examinations for the devotees. There was an exam 1972 in Mayapur. And even in 1960s in America, Prabhupada gave exam said, you'll get the degree Bhakti Shastri. So like that, Prabhupada said we should study. And he thought, what should be the different books we study? Bhakti Shastri means you study the Bhagavad Gita, Nectar of Instruction, first part of Nectar of Devotion, and also Ishopanishad. Thank you. So now, Many more devotees are studying, they're seeing the need, and the studying is only part of it. You have to make use of what you learn. We have to apply it in our life. And the best way to apply it is when you start teaching it yourself. So you study and then you go and teach. The students go on, good students, they'll go on to become teachers. So we need many teachers. And we're teaching in many different parts of the world. The different courses are going on in different languages very effectively. It's helping to give people more transcendental knowledge. So this is pleasing to the Acharyas, pleasing to Srila Prabhupada. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna.